Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. We've got an Everton general meeting special for you this week. The event took place at the iconic Liverpool Philharmonic Hall on Tuesday night and along the way in this week's programme we'll hear from all the main contributors starting off of course with our chairman Mr Bill Kenwright who explains to everybody just how important Mr Farhad Mashiri has been to Everton Football Club. The biggest biggest plus in the world of football is having a benefactor who says yes and it's it's not just the 150 million and say that slowly 150 million interest free i've never heard him in the two years we've been together say no i've never heard him say maybe when De denise will say she comes to the board and the board goes to fire i go to fire and he says yes and he says yes to the managers. And he says yes to me. And he's a true blue. He sent me a, a, a January the 1st uh, text saying, here's to a year of victories for our beloved blues. And he's a true blue. And guys, he's the difference. And the difference is a man who says, you got a dream, I'm going to help you get that dream for Evertonians. OK, let's hear now from the man himself, Mr Farhad Mashiri, en route to the Everton General Meeting on Tuesday, called into USM Finch Farm, and he sat down to speak to Everton TV. Well, I think we had a very difficult start to the season, and, and you know, I don't deny it. You know, it was a shock for me. Uh, after the very good season we had, last year and the heavy expenditure expectations were high the fixture list was bad we didn't have a proper pre-season you know we had a tour to tanzania and then we had the europa league but still the team didn't seem to have a shape so we had to take action you know the team is performing much better uh, and i'm comfortable that in the second half of the year with Bolasi, McCarthy, and hopefully Seamus coming back, uh, we'll have a very good second half of the season. Performances, in many ways, are as important as the results. So the first seven games of Sam they were very good. Uh, and I think then we just didn't have the rub of the green, the last minute goal at Bournemouth soft penalty uh, Liverpool but then it will turn you know we are happy I mean the important thing is the fighting spirit if you're fighting we have enough quality to do well you were very complimentary about Sam when he became manager and as you say he became the first manager in Everton history to go for seven matches unbeaten how impressed have you been with what he's done well I've followed Sam as as I told you you know at the time of his appointment he's one of the managers I've followed for many years I, I read his autobiography before recruiting him, Big Sam. So, so he's a real man, he's a real football. And what you can see is a, he's, he's a good tactician, but more importantly, he has a tidy football brain. We have to have a stadium, and we will have a stadium. And I think when the building work starts, is proof of the pudding. So I think we want to get to that stage. But until we get to that, it is at preparation stage. But we are, at, we are progressing well. We have a multi-year plan. I think we get bumps on the road. But the plan is intact. I think resolutely we go through the plan to achieve, to learn from our mistakes, avoid them. But no single setback would, you know, derail us. I mean, we are on the road and we'll get there. Strong words there from Mr Mashiri. Well, one of the highlights, one of the many highlights from the Everton General Meeting was an excellent presentation from Robert Elston, who gave everybody in the auditorium an update on the situation regarding our proposed move to the Bramley dock site. Mr Elston also confirmed that life under Mr Mashiri is pretty good. 
whether it's stimulating and pushing forward on the new stadium, whether it's supporting community initiatives, whether it's supporting the investment in, investment in players, having Mr. Mashiri there uh, saying yes to things and backing us is fantastic. And you know, so I talked about it briefly in the meeting. It's not that long ago that you know, cliche. Now I know 85 pence in every pound went into Finch Farm. There was 15p in every pound left over for everything else we were supposed to be doing. And as Bill said, you know. In a, a slightly exaggerated, you know, can we paint that wall? Well, let's wait three months to see if we can find the money. Well, you know, it's not a million miles from the truth. So again, to have that financial pressure taken off us, I think it's really important we maintain the discipline that goes with it. But to have that pressure taken off us, uh, clearly give us scope to do, you know, all the great things we wanted to do, all the ideas we had. So, yeah, a real sense of um, a real sense of optimism backed up by the mayor with his really positive words about reaching a partnership and a deal on the stadium and backed up by Mr Mashiri in terms of his commitment to supporting his manager to allow football decisions to decide you know, who we buy rather than uh, commercial decisions. A lot of grounds for optimism. You know, I think more than any other season we've seen how six clubs with deep pockets uh, and, and that self-fulfilling circle of European football, Champions League football in particular, is really hard to break into. You know, the depth and quality in those squads is, is substantial. But, you know, we also saw three or four years ago how, you know, a team on a smaller budget um, finished fifth, got 72 points, challenged for top four status in any other season probably would have got there. So we know we can do it. You know, uh, it is more than just being about the money. And if we can gel together, you know, the right team, uh, recruitment so important to us, but also uh, keep unearthing, you know, high quality young players through our academy, then, you know, there's every reason to be optimistic. Of course, uh, there's a reality that bar is set phenomenally high. Listen, this is the hardest league in the world. And, you know, the six clubs that occupy the top six places, you know, have very, very deep budgets. So, you know, let's not be uh, unrealistic about it, but it's a challenge we'll relish and it's a challenge we're up for. Also taking centre stage on Tuesday night was Denise Barrow baxendale our deputy CEO. She gave an excellent presentation of her own, bringing everybody up to speed with what's been another productive and fantastic year for Everton in the community. And she also spoke about the legacy that Everton Football Club will leave behind in the Walton area when we leave Goodison Park. The campaign that we've had since 2012 in redeveloping Goodison has had one intention really and that is our legacy project. So we've been having, as I said earlier, a campus um, viewpoint where we've built, developed um, buildings and services in the immediate shadows of the stadium. Um, the big prize though is Goodison Park and what would happen there in terms of a legacy project um, when we move to Bramley Moor Dock. So uh, that really does give us an opportunity to be innovative and creative and to look internationally at how we can build a healthy, wealthy um, prosperous and vibrant community for uh, the members of Liverpool for. It's crucial, you know, many other football clubs leave their stadium and hand over the, uh, the ta take a tariff off a housing builder or, you know, a retail unit, but uh, Everton Football Club doesn't want to do that. Um, and I had the support of the board when I asked if we could register the site as a community asset. Um, and we get full backing because it's the right thing for do for, to do for Everton Football Club and the board are custodians of this magnificent football club. And whilst we're all in office, we have to do the right thing and leaving a substantial civic inheritance for the people people of Liverpool is the right thing for Everton Football Club to do. There are certainly plenty of reasons for Evertonians to be proud and positive at this moment in time, not least of which of course is the stewardship of Sam Allardyce. Big Sam was making his Everton general meeting debut on Tuesday night and he joined me on stage with our director of football Steve Walsh. Steve started proceedings by speaking about the pursuit and the recruitment of Jen Tosin. Well, it was first highlighted that he scored 24 goals in uh, last season. Um, we had uh, people out to uh, get a, a viewing of him. Uh, we subsequently tracked him, watched his games, Champions League against Porto or Monaco. And uh, we think he's got the attributes that will, uh, will be good for us. We then showed all the uh, information to uh, our new manager and the coaching staff and we all sat together and decided that this was the guy that uh, will make a difference. After listening all to these fantastic presentations, it's my responsibility to make sure that team is the best it could possibly be, which helps everybody in the community, as well as all the fans of Everton. And of course, the responsibility to take the club into a new stadium is equally just as big and just as important because a new stadium with 50,000, 60,000 has to have a very, very good team to go with it. 
So my position is short term now, survival, put the team in a good position and the long term future is to build a team of the future for that fantastic new stadium that's coming along. So hopefully we can deliver on that front as well as everybody else delivering as well. And that just about brings us to the end of part one of this week's Everton show. But don't go too far away because coming up after this short break, I'll be joined here by Graeme Stewart and Graeme Sharp. We'll hear from our brand new signing, Jen Tosin. And we'll speak to Phil Jagielka about our visit to Wembley at the weekend to play Tottenham Hotspur in the Premier League. Welcome back to part two of this week's programme. Now I think it'll be a little bit strange at the weekend to go to Wembley Stadium for a Premier League game. But well, one person with plenty of experience of English football's HQ is of course our captain Phil Jagielka. He enjoyed his finest moments of course in an Everton jersey when he famously converted a winning penalty in the 2009 FA Cup semi-final against Manchester United. We sat down at USM Finch Farm earlier this week with Jags to speak about this weekend's visit to Wembley. Yeah, uh, England's record, especially in qualifying and stuff, was was pretty special at Wembley, and there's been a couple of good days, a couple of not so good days in the cup. So, uh, so it's a special place to go. Obviously, it'll be different this year. It'll be obviously branded in uh, in Spurs attire and, and things like that. Uh, what change room and stuff you're in, but you know it's a big pitch. Um, you know, a really good team. So we'll uh, have to make sure that we put in a a good performance and hopefully uh, give Spurs a few problems. You say it will be slightly different playing there in a league game, but is there still a buzz going and playing at Wembley? Yeah, I think so. I'd, obviously, I've been there quite a few times. There won't be as as big a buzz as maybe someone who hasn't been there or only been there once or twice. But you know, I think if you go in there for a semi-final or a final, the atmosphere would be electric. So I think think the buzz would be slightly bigger. But um, say it's up to us to, to to get there, quieten that crowd down. You know, the the the, the fans are a decent bit away from the pitch. If we can make it a a quiet atmosphere and, and, and put a good performance in and say it's all about building um, you know, towards the end of the season and, and, and getting high up as possible. In terms of the challenge you face on the pitch, obviously the biggest threat is Harry Kane and he's somebody you know well from England squads, isn't he? Yeah, H has done you know, fantastic over the course of the last couple of years. He's got better and better. Uh, you know, He takes his chances, he, he takes a lot of shots on, he, 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 he wants to test the goalkeeper as many times as he can in a game, so it's it's difficult to keep him quiet for the whole 90 minutes and obviously when you've got people like Delhi and Ericsson around him that are either you know, creating chances or <coughs> scoring goals as well, um, they're a massive threat so um, it's up to us to, to go there with a, with a game plan, uh, hopefully starve those attacking players of the ball and um, maybe give Larissa a, a, a few things to have to deal with themselves. Um, you just know you've been in a game, it's as simple as that, he puts himself about. He doesn't look to pass when he gets um, sort of in the final third. He he wants to get those goals. He finds himself in the in the right position at the right time. Uh, you know, it, it can't be by coincidence that the amount of goals he scores. Um, I say even the tappings. You know, he's got to be there at the right time. So, uh, you know, we had Tim Cale at, at one point who, who found himself you know in the right place at the right time for crosses and and stuff like that. And and Harry's got that to his game. And I say he's a pretty decent finisher. We need to make sure you know. Spurs haven't got the best record at home. Uh, you know, White Hart Lane was a, was a, was a bit of a fortress, but this one, obviously, uh, say if we can get there, uh, get the, get a good start, anything's possible. Defensively, we've been a lot more solid in the last couple of months or so, Graham. We've conceded a couple of goals against Bournemouth, United, and Liverpool, but there were accentuating circumstances in some of them. We've still mm -hmm. been a lot better defensively. How would you stop Harry Kane? Well, it's a difficult one. I mean, not ma not many people are. Have worked that one out. Mm. That's because you know he, he's so prolific. Um, I think he's a terrific player. I think he is the best out there at this moment in time. Um, and we are going to have a work cut out, and we are going to have to defend as a unit as well as we've poss possibly defended all season to keep Tottenham out because the threat isn't just Harry Kane. It is Ericsson. It is oh. Deli Ali. You know he mixes his game up so well, Harry Kane, because he can also drop deep and he can mm. get hold of the ball from deep and he picks people out. Deli Alley makes mm. forward runs left, right and mm. centre and he's, you know, he ghosts into positions. If the ball comes into the box, you can bet your bottom dollar Deli Alley's going to be there. So as a unit, as a back four or a back three, whatever we play, we've got to be rock solid. We've got to communicate. We've got to make sure we track runners. And obviously the one big thing is to, is to make sure we take care of Harry Kane because... The boy's we, son is playing well, isn't he? Yeah. Well. Song as well, yeah. We, yeah. He doesn't get a mention and he's a terrific player. Yeah. I really like him as well, but... 
you know, if, if he plays, again, plenty of energy, talented mm. boy as well, knows where the back of the net is. He, so he can shoot, can they, that's, that's for sure. Yeah, that's for certain. I mean, he's shown that last week, didn't he? I mean, the reality of it is, going forward, they're very, very strong mm. Tottenham. There's no doubt about it. So, defensively, we are going to have to be absolutely rock solid if we want to come away from Wembley with any points. I, I think, uh, looking back at the Liverpool game, I thought defensively, for, for the majority of the game, we were good. Mm -hmm. I thought we were well, well managed and, 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 and compact. It made it difficult for Liverpool. Yeah, they had a lot of possession, but never really had a shot to goal. Never really created any chances. So we need to have that discipline against Tottenham. A big, big pitch at Wembley. Everybody knows how sapping it can be as well. But we need to be as organised as what we were. And listen, I think in the team now, what we're seeing a change of is we're having more of an outlet. We've got Balassi back who gives us that outlet with a little bit of pace. Lookman can do that as well. Mm. Uh, he did so well, didn't he, when he, he did, came on? He came on. He, he did well, uh, young Lookman, when he came on. But... I just think with the, with the introduction of Balassi now, he gives us something we haven't had all season, which is that little bit of pace on the break. Uh, so if he can if he can defend and be as compact as we were against Liverpool, listen, it's always disappointing losing goals, especially from set pieces off the, the corner. But I thought in the whole, I thought we would look to a better organised unit. Listen, we all know it's going to be a tough, tough fixture. As Diamond said before, one of the most attractive teams to watch. Uh, so we know all about the t their attacking talent, but I just hope whoever plays up front or whoever plays, whether it be Balassi or Aaron Lane, whatever, we can give them problems as well. We can pose a threat. If we can do that, you know, it's, I, I, I wouldn't say it's, you know, you look at fixtures and you say, oh, we're not going to get anything there. I, I don't have that now thinking we're not going to get anything down there. I honestly believe we can go down there and get a result. It will be difficult, mm. but... There's nothing to stop us. Well, the Evertonians travelling down to Wembley for the game this weekend will be hoping to get a first glimpse in a royal blue jersey of Cenk Tosin. As for the player himself, he's hoping to strike up a relationship with the Evertonians that's every bit as good as the one he enjoyed in Turkey with the followers of Besiktas. Yeah, we had really, we had really good fans, uh, amazing fans, maybe the best fans. Uh, but I heard about it that uh, the Everton fans is same like, same like the Besiktas fans. Uh, I say again, I'm really excited to 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 meet them uh, in the stadium, and uh, yeah, they're gonna tr they have to trust me. And we have some big games coming up. For example, Tottenham at Wembley. How much are you looking forward to to challenges like that? Yeah, I'm. As I said, I want to play as soon as possible. Uh, I want to train with with the team for uh, knows everybody. Um, yeah, I I can play the first game. I think in Tottenham game. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to to meet the guys uh, and the fans. And you're used to playing in big atmospheres, big games. Yeah. Does that bring out the best in you? Yeah, I like it to 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 play in uh, good stadiums, in in uh, good atmosphere stadiums, and uh, yeah, Besiktas was was like this and I hope in Everton will be like this also. Everybody gonna gonna see what what kind of player I am and and I think I will I will be a good player in in the Premier League and for Everton. No better place to go for Jenk Tosin to make his Everton debut than Wembley Stadium. Yeah it's a, fin a fantastic opportunity for him Dan. Uh, I'm sure there's not a lot of Evertonians know a lot about him uh, but I think when you look at his record uh, in Turkey, especially over the last couple of seasons, it's very good. So we just hope that he, he can hit the ground running. You know, obviously it's a it's a different culture he's got to get used to as well. The football will be different as well. But for him to make possibly make his debut at Wembley mm. doesn't come better than that. He scored twenty goals in thirty three league games in Turkey last season, Graham. So he knows where the back of the net is. Now people will say Let's not compare the Turkish League to the Premier League, but he's also scored goals in the Champions League as well. Yeah, importantly, yeah. Uh, four goals, I think it was, in the Champions League, mm. and a couple of those were against Monaco as well. So, you know, decent side to, to be scoring against at Champions League level. So we just hope he's got that calibre and that pedigree to, to bring into the Premier League and, as Sharpie says, hit the ground running because that's what we need from him. Hopefully, um, we've got to give him a little bit of time because it is a different culture. It's, it's, it's a big move for him and his family and what have you. So we've got to give him a little, little bit of time <coughs> and to get used to his teammates as, and for uh, the, t the lads to get used to the way he plays as well. So all in all, I, th I think it's going to be a terrific signing for the football club, hopefully. And, uh, you know, he gets some of those goals because that's what we need. 
He's played in a Besiktas side that are still involved in the Champions League, mm -hmm. Shelby, but he swapped that to come to Everton, which I like. Well, yeah, Dan, I think you look at it and you think that, no disrespect to the Turkish League, but I think if anybody over there got the chance of playing in the English Premier League, I think they'd jump at it. You know, obviously, we look elsewhere in, in the Spanish League, and I think it's a big two in, in the Spanish League that, that uh, players would jump at to go there. But I think, coming from the Turkish League, I think he, he couldn't turn down a move to, to the Premier League. He's been linked with a few clubs in the past in the Premier League. Everton are probably the biggest one he's been linked with. Uh, but, you know, the manager showed faith in him, bringing him over. Uh, and listen, it's an area we've been crying out to be strengthened, you know, since Lukaku left in the summer. You know, Dominic's come in and done a good job, uh, but he needs more support. And Umar Nias has, has played odd game as well. Uh, but we need somebody who, who's a proven goal scorer at the highest level. Uh, and as, as Diamond said before, he's record in, in, in the Turkish Super League and also in the Champions League. You know, we can't argue with that. So Evertonians are wanting to take off the mark very, very quickly, settle down, enjoy his football, and, and hopefully get us further up the table. And that's just about it for this week's Everton show. My thanks enormously to everybody involved. It really has been an action-packed show this weekend. To all of you who are going to Wembley, do enjoy yourselves in the capital city and do join us again in seven days' time for another Everton show. You've been watching the Everton show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.